I quite enjoyed using the Garmin Vivo Active 5, however after just having finished testing the Garmin Venue 3, it felt slightly underwhelming. At $300, the Vivo Active 5 is significantly cheaper than the Venue 3, which has a list price of about $450, but just seeing the smaller screen of the Vivo Active 5 and knowing it has the older generation sensor, it just felt like I had downgraded. However, what about the sports and health tracking performance? Is the Vivo Active 5 worse than the Venue 3? Or or is the Vivo Active 5 just as capable? Well, that's what we're gonna test in this video. First, we'll test the heart rate tracking performance during different types of exercises. Second, we'll test the sleep stage tracking against an EEG reference. And third, we'll take a look at the GPS tracking consistency. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, like I said, in this video, we will test different aspects of the sports and health tracking of the Garmin Vivo Active 5. As regular viewers will know, I don't like listing the specs of watches, but let's briefly discuss what this watch can do and what are the major differences compared to its slightly more expensive brother, the Venue 3. The most important difference to me is the fact that the Vivo Active 5 has an older generation heart rate sensor than the Venue 3, which would theoretically improve the performance of the Venue 3 in specific circumstances, but we will test this, of course. The Venue 3 can also control your smart trainer and can connect to power meters which the Vivo Active 5 cannot do. Also the Venue 3 has a barometric altimeter which could help you count the number of stairs more accurately. Finally, the bezel around the screen looks significantly bigger on the Vivo Active 5 compared to the Venue 3, which is part of the reason why it felt like a downgrade to me. Okay, those are the most important differences in my opinion, and what I really care about is performance. Is the Vivo Active 5 just as good as the Venue 3 or is there a noticeable difference? As always, let's start by testing the heart rate tracking accuracy of the Vivo Active 5 and also compare it against other watches out there. We will start off by looking at the heart rate tracking performance of the Vivo Active 5 during indoor cycling, which is a relatively easy exercise for a watch to track given the limited movement and lack of tension on my arm. And here you can see an overview of the results. Now to test the performance, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Vivo Active 5 against the Polar H10 EGG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. Now each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 EGG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Vivo Active 5 and the closer the points are to the blue line the better the agreement and also the darker black the color the more dots that there are and as you can see most points are luckily close to the blue line which is good we also see that the correlation this R value up here is quite okay at 0.88 it's not amazing but also definitely not bad since the correlation cannot be higher than 1 so 0.88 is pretty close but especially above the blue line a few points are a bit further away indicating a too high heart rate sometimes but let's take a look at the individual rise to see what's going on here and here we have the first example interval spinning session where we see a pretty decent agreement between the Vivo Active 5 and the ECG chest strap. Along the horizontal axis here we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. With in blue green my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red my heart rate according to the Vivo Active 5. And for this ride we have a pretty good agreement. There are some small delays in the Vivo Active 5 detecting a dip in my heart rate. You can see that for instance right here but also right here and right here. But these are really minor. However, looking at this second spinning session, we see the same problem but quite a lot bigger. So we see some small delay right here, but right here and right here, the delay is quite a bit bigger and there the Vivo Active 5 is detecting a way too high heart rate for a while. And we see something similar for other rides. For instance, for this ride right here, we see it missed this dip here in its entirety. So it kept detecting a too high heart rate and even right here, here and here, there's some delay in it picking up an increase in my heart rate. So here it detected a too low heart rate. And for some of the other spinning sessions we see something similar. Where as you detect a dip in my heart rate it either keeps detecting a too high heart rate or first has a small dip and then a peak in my heart rate where I should have had a dip in my heart rate. You can see something similar for this session right here where there was first a bit of a dip and then all of a sudden it increases again. So I'm not sure what's going on here and also not sure what's mostly for this first segment. Which is actually what we see for many rides. Also this one right here for instance. 
So that's looking okay, I would say, though it does show some small issues or maybe some medium issues with the heart rate tracking of the Vivo Active 5 already. However, how does this compare to the performance of the Venue 3 and also to many of the other watches out there? Let's take a look. That overview is displayed right here and the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric we will use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis right here. We want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. Best. So the further to the right and the higher the device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the Vivo Active 5 in red. And as you can see, it's somewhere in the middle, maybe lower middle class of watches. It's not terrible for sure, but there are better devices out there. But let's zoom in a bit so we can read those labels better. And here we have that zoomed in view with just the watches of a correlation of 0.8 or better. And as you can see, the Vivo Active 5 is definitely not bad. It's about as good as, for instance, the Polar Vantage M, even the Garmin Epix 2, Vivo Smart 5 and Instinct 2. So among some other Garmin devices, but there are are better devices out there. The Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro and Epix 2 Pro did better on me, for instance, if we look at Garmin watches specifically, but especially some Huawei watches, the Pixel Watch 2. And as regular viewers will know, Apple watches are very good at heart rate tracking during exercise. I know not everybody's a fan of Apple, but they are good at what they do in terms of heart rate tracking. Now, before I forget, we didn't address the Venue 3 yet, and we can see the Garmin Venue 3 right here, and this does seem to be doing significantly better than the Vivo Active 5. So that newer sensor at least on me for indoor cycling seems to be a significant improvement over the older one so for me that was an interesting and important observation okay this isn't great it's not terrible but also not great i would say my heart rate tends to drop a lot when i take short breaks in between intervals and the vivo active 5 appears to have slightly more issues with this than the venue 3 for instance However, this might not be the same issue for everyone. Still, be aware it might happen to you as well. Let's now take a look at the next most difficult exercise for a watch to track running outside. Now, running outside increases the bumpiness during the exercise. However, there's still little tension on my arm and on my wrist. So this is only slightly harder for a watch to get a clean heart rate signal. Let's see how the Vivo Active 5 did. And an overview of that is displayed right here. So similar to before, but now for running. And we can see that most points are again close to the blue line. And the correlation is even a bit higher than before now at 0.9 compared to the 0.88 we had before for indoor cycling. So that looks pretty good. But we can still see some points a bit away from the blue line, especially here in the lower heart rate range. But it's definitely better than what we saw for indoor cycling. But let's take a look at the individual runs to see what's going on. So this is an individual run with again the Vivo Active 5 in red and the Polar H10 in blue. And as you can see, the Vivo Active 5 generally follows along quite well with the Polar H10, though some of the small details are missed. So we can see, for instance, right here and right here that the dips are not fully detected. And also right here, there's a small delay in it picking up an increase in my heart rate. But overall, this looks pretty good. And that's also what we see for this second run. Some of the small details are not matching, but overall, this looks good enough for me. And here we have the overview for running. Now you see fewer watches in here because they only more recently started running. But as you can see, the Vivo Active 5 in red seems to be doing pretty okay. It's about as good as the Whoopstrap 4.0, for instance, or the Polar Ignite 3. So just looking at it, the Venue 3 might be slightly better. Though I wouldn't say we have enough data to conclusively say anything. They're quite close to each other. Apple Watches are again doing significantly better. And also the Coral Space 3 and Pixel Watch 2 are quite good during running. Next, let's take a look at an even more difficult exercise for a watch to track, cycling outside. This is generally much harder for watches because there's much more bumpiness and also a lot more tension on my arms because I'm holding on to the handlebars. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Also, I'm trying to become part of the first people who receive watches to review from companies like Garmin, which is a list I'm not currently on. So if you want to help me make faster and better reviews, it would really help if you like, subscribe and or comment. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's get back to testing the Vivo Active 5. And by now you're probably familiar with this type of overview, but now it's for cycling outside. And we can see that in this case, quite a few points are away from the blue line. There's a few above it, but especially below it, there's a big cloud of points. And we can all see that the correlation, so this R value is a lot lower now at 0.67. So let's take a look at the individual rides so we can understand what's going on here. And here we have the first example bike ride with again the reference in blue green and the Vivo Active 5 in red. And this one actually doesn't look too bad. This is one of the better 
the rights. Mostly it follows along quite well. There are some small issues, for instance, right here, it doesn't fully detect the dip. And also right here, there's a small delay in it picking up an increase in my heart rate, but overall not bad. But some of the other rides are quite a bit worse. For instance, this one already shows some more issues with it not detecting all the peaks in my heart rate and also not the dips in my heart rate. This one again looks quite good. Then again, here we have a quite bad ride where a lot of the peaks in my heart rate were not fully detected or at least not initially detected. So quite a bit of a delay in detecting a change in my heart rate. And that's also what we see right here. Here some of the peaks are fully missed. So for outdoor cycling, the Vivo Active 5, at least on me, struggles quite a bit. But let's again put this into perspective by comparing all the different watches. So this is a similar overview to before with the Garmin Vivo Active 5 marked in red. And as you can see, most watches have a much lower correlation for cycling outside. And you can also appreciate that the Vivo Active 5 is somewhere in the middle range of watches. It's not amongst the best and not amongst the worst, but a correlation of 0.6768 isn't that great honestly some other garmin watches are quite close to it for instance the vivo move sport and the apex 2 but let's zoom in a little bit because it might be a bit hard to read so here i zoomed into just the watches with a correlation of 0.6 or higher and as i said the apex 2 and vivo move sport were close but also the 4965 is quite close to the vivo active 5 but looking at the watches with the newer sensor these seem to be doing a bit better we have the apex 2 pro and the phoenix 7 pro here so these have both the newer garmin sensor and especially the Garmin Venue 3 right here does seem to be doing significantly better than the Vivo Active 5. And I suspect this is because of the newer sensor and its lighter weight compared to the Apex 2 Pro and the Phoenix 7 Pro. So the Apex 2 Pro and Phoenix 7 Pro would move more on my wrist because of their weight and the Venue 3 is likely more stable. So that's likely the reason why the Phoenix 7 Pro and Apex 2 Pro were just a bit better, but the Venue 3 was quite a lot better. But it is important to mention that there will always be some error range in this, which I cannot visualize here but for instance the venue 2 plus which has the older sensor is actually quite close to the phoenix 7 pro and epix 2 pro so i wouldn't even say with certainty that the vivo active 5 is significantly worse than the epix 2 and phoenix 7 pro but i do think based on this it is very likely that the venue 3 is doing better than the vivo active 5. Now finally, let's take a look at the performance of the Vivo Active 5 during weightlifting. Weightlifting is generally the exercise that watches struggle with most because there's so much tension on my arm. Let's have a look at how the Vivo Active 5 did. And in the overview for weightlifting, we see there's almost no points above the blue line, but there are some points below the blue line, indeed indicating that sometimes the Vivo Active 5 detected a too low heart rate. And I suspect that this was during the peaks of my exercise. So you can see that only in the medium to high heart rate range are the points away from the blue line, and the lower heart rate range is mostly correct. So I expect but we cannot be sure until we look at the individual sessions that it couldn't fully pick up on the peaks in my heart rate but it isn't terrible there are many watches that struggle much more and have a much lower correlation but let's take a look at the individual weightlifting sessions so for the weightlifting sessions, we generally have these spikes in my heart rate when I do a set, which you can see in blue, and only some of them are detected by the Vivo Active 5. So for instance, this peak and this peak here were detected, but this peak, this peak, and a few others near the end were missed. And that's also what we see for this second example weightlifting session. Again, some of the peaks are picked up on here near the end, some are picked up on, but many of them are missed. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. I should mention though that the examples I just gave you were for up upper body exercises but when I train legs the watch is a lot better so you can see that here for the first half of this training I was training legs and as you can see here it follows along quite well with my heart rate only later on when I did more upper body stuff again it struggled so this is what we generally see for watches and the Vivo Active 5 is definitely not the worst watch out there but you can see it struggles for upper body exercises at least on me but again let's put these results into perspective by comparing them against many of the other watches I've tested before and here you can see that the Vivo Active 5 in red compared to many of the other watches out there is doing quite okay it's in the upper middle class of watches i would say but as always we need to zoom in to read those labels better and here we have just the watches with a correlation of 0.7 or higher and as you can see the vivo active 5 is quite close to some other garmin devices for instance the phoenix 7 pro the apix 2 pro but also all the devices like the venue 3 and 4965 and in this case the venue 3 is actually not doing better than the vivo active 5 but they're all very close to each other so i think that the newer sensor here didn't do much for improving the performance during weightlifting again some of the better watches out there are apple watches which all have a quite high correlation 
correlation. But in general, I would only use watches with a correlation of 0.9, preferably 0.95 or higher for weightlifting. And if you really want accurate heart rate tracking during weightlifting, just use an ECG strap. So Garmin devices in general seem to be in the upper middle class of watches for weightlifting. But still, I don't think that any of them are good enough for weightlifting. And it goes for most watches in general. I would recommend using an ECG chest strap if you really want accurate heart rate tracking during weightlifting. As I said, it could be that some of these results I showed you might not be the same on some other people, so I wanted to have some independent data. I also tested the Vivo Active 5 on Teresa. Now I won't go into the same level of detail, but let's see how it did on her. Now Teresa did not test it for indoor cycling but she did test it for running and as you can see it generally performed quite well on her with a correlation of 0.96 so that's really close to 1. So on her for running it's looking even better than it did on me. Now looking at the individual runs for Teresa we do see some minor deviations for instance right here and right here but overall looking pretty good. And for this other run, we see more or less the same thing. There are some minor deviations, but overall pretty decent, I would say. Now, Teresa only tested a few watches for me so far, but as you can see also for her, the Venue 3 does seem to do better than the Vivo Active 5. The Venue 3 is quite close to some of the Apple watches, which are again doing best. And the Vivo Active 5, even though it's still quite good, does seem to be worse than the Venue 3. And for biking, Teresa also gets a much better correlation than I did with a correlation of 0.92. So compared to my correlation, which I believe was 0.67 or 0.68, this is really a lot better. For her, mostly in the higher heart rate range is almost spot on. So there's almost no deviation in this area. In the middle to lower heart rate range, there's a bit of deviation, but overall quite a good performance on her. It's not quite as good as we saw for running, but still good. Now looking at the rides themselves for Teresa, we don't see this issue that I had of delay of an increase in heart rate quite as often. We see it a little bit right here in the beginning potentially for this ride, but overall this one looks really good. For this second ride, we see it a bit more. So also right here, there's a small delay and here a small delay and it picking up an increase in heart rate. And especially right here, it's a bit more apparent, but overall definitely better than it performed on me. And some other rides, except for here in the beginning, are more or less spot on for Teresa with some minor deviations, for instance, right here. And also for this ride, we see more or less the same thing. And also for biking outside, we see more or less the same order as we saw for running and also as we see on me. So the Vivo Active 5 is worse than the Venue 3 and the Apple watches are the best watches. Now for weightlifting, Teresa has a similar correlation as I did with 0.82 for her and 0.80 for me. So just looking at that metric, this seems similar. But if we look at the individual patterns, I do find they look better for her. But let's take a look. Now, if we look at the individual sessions, it does look a bit better than it did on me, though we should keep in mind that Teresa is more prone to do lower body exercises than me. I do mostly upper body workouts, and for her, it might be closer to 50-50 or even dominated by lower body workouts. But as you can see here in the beginning, there was some deviation. It missed some of the peaks in heart rate. Later on, it's a lot better. Also for this exercise, it's more or less spot on. I suspect that these were mostly lower body exercises, so where there was not a lot of tension on the wrist. And also for this last example, it looks a lot better than it looked on me. Some of the peaks were not fully detected, but overall pretty okay. And maybe somewhat surprisingly, though maybe you suspected this, the Vivo Active 5 also for weightlifting is slightly worse than the Venue 3 on Teresa. And again, the Apple Watches are doing best. So in general, over all of the exercises, the ordering seems to be more or less the same as it is on me. Overall, the performance of the Vivo Active 5 seems better on Teresa than on me. Uh, for both me and Teresa, the Venue 3 appears to do significantly better than the Vivo Active 5. Overall, I'm not super impressed with the Vivo Active 5, but it's also not terrible. However, if you really care about heart rate, something like the Venue 3 definitely seems like the better choice. Therefore, I'd give the heart rate tracking of the Garmin Vivo Active 5 around 3 out of 5 stars. Next, let's take a look at the sleep stage tracking of the Garmin Vivo Active 5, which I tested for a total of 4 nights. To test the sleep stage tracking performance, I'll compare the Vivo Active 5 to the ZMAX EEG headband, which can actually measure my brain waves. This device also has its limitations, especially when it comes to detecting awake time. I've discussed this in several of my recent videos, so I won't go into details here, but what it boils down to is that I mostly ignore the awake time in the analysis. Here I show an overview of the sleep test results with on top the sleep stages as recorded by the ZMAX EEG device and on the left the sleep stages as recorded by the Vivo Active 5. 
Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the ZMAX was predicted as each sleep stage by the VivoActive 5. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now, first of all, we can see that about 70% of what the EEG device said was deep sleep was also detected as deep sleep by the VivoActive 5. So that seems pretty good. And if it was predicted differently, this was mostly predicted as being light sleep instead by the VivoActive 5. Now, looking at the individual nights will help us understand that even better. And here we can see the first night I wanted to share with you. On top, we have the sleep stages according to the ZMAX EEG headband with along the horizontal axis, the clock time and my sleep stages on the vertical axis. And on the bottom, we have a similar plot, but now for the VivoActive 5. And here in purple, I highlighted the deep sleep as detected by the EEG device. And as you can see, this generally agrees quite well with the VivoActive 5 for this night. So basically, all of the deep sleep detected by the EEG device was also detected by the VivoActive 5, though the VivoActive 5 did detect more deep sleep. So this segment here was longer and also an extra segment right here was detected, but overall looking pretty decent. And for this second night, we see more or less the same thing. So these two segments right here and here agree very well, though this segment right here is missed. Though we also see that the VivoActive 5 here didn't detect my sleep for a little bit. So for some reason right here, it struggled to get any signal and it missed the deep sleep segment right after. So in some way, this could have been an exceptional situation where the signal quality was just worse than normal. Light sleep agreement is also pretty decent at about 72%, with most confusion being with deep sleep, but also the other sleep stages sometimes, so both REM sleep and awake time. Now REM sleep agreement was the worst between the EEG device and the VivoActive 5. Only 37% of what the EEG device said was REM sleep was also predicted as REM sleep by the VivoActive 5, so that's quite low percentage. A larger percentage was predicted as being light sleep instead at about 52%. This is generally something I've seen with Garmin devices that REM sleep shows the lowest agreement with the EEG device. Now even though in percentages the REM sleep agreement seems to be pretty bad, it's not as bad if we actually look at the individual nights. So as you can see I likely had one, two, three, four, five REM sleep segments right here. And three out of these five were also detected by the VivoActive 5, though they were not the exact same duration. So here in the beginning, the first segment was detected, also the second segment was detected, and the fourth and the third and fifth were missed. So this might not be as bad as the percentages led on. And we also see something somewhat similar for this night right here. So the second and third and even fourth REM sleep segment mostly agree, though again the durations are different. And this first one was shifted a bit, so maybe overall not quite as as bad as the percentages let on. Now, as I said, we're not going to focus on awake time, but just for completeness, we see that about 40% of what the EEG device said was awake time was also detected as awake time by the VivoActive 5, and a larger percentage of what the EEG device said was awake time was instead predicted as light sleep at about 50%. But again, we're not going to focus on this because the EEG device detects a lot of short awakenings that are probably not relevant. So in our judgment, let's mostly keep focusing on the other sleep stages, so deep, light, and REM. As I said, I don't want to focus on the awake moments, but just for completeness, here in green are marked the awake moments as detected by the EEG device, and the longer ones here in the end at least show somewhat agreement that the Vivo Active 5 and the EEG device disagree a lot about these shorter awake moments throughout the night. However, these might be more short arousals and not actually awake moments. And we see more or less the same thing for this second night, where these longer awake moments here in the end agree quite okay, just the shorter awake moments do not always agree. So this one right here and this one right here do agree between both of them. And then right here we have this part of probably poor signal quality. So overall not the worst, but I really don't think we can say much about the awake moments. So the sleep stage tracking performance of the Vivo Active 5 isn't great, but also not bad. It showed similar patterns to how other Garmin watches perform on me, which makes me suspect that it does about as well as other recent Garmin devices. However, we can actually check this by comparing the Vivo Active 5 directly against many of the other watches I tested in the past. Now this graph right here shows you an overview of the agreement of different watches with different reference devices. Along the horizontal axis, we have the average agreement over the individual sleep stages, and on the vertical axis, we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. 
Now, the better the agreement with the reference device, the more to the top right the device is. Now, we should note that this overview is slightly complicated because we use different reference devices. The device is not marked in any color. We're tested against the Dream 2 EEG headband, so my normal reference, which I cannot use anymore because Dream went bankrupt. The device is marked in green. We're tested against the ZMAX EEG headband, so the one we're using in this video. And the device is marked in blue purple. We're tested against PSG or polysomnography, which is the gold standard in sleep stage tracking. And and as you can see, the Vivo Active 5 marked in green right here is mostly close to other Garmin devices. So it's somewhere in the middle of watches. I wouldn't say it's bad like some Huawei devices or Mi Bands, but I also wouldn't say it's great like for instance Apple Watches or the Nuco app. The Vivo Active 5 likely performs just as well as other relatively new Garmin devices like the Phoenix 7, the 40255, the Venue 3, the 40965. Currently, they probably all use the same algorithm and perform more or less similarly, and there will be some variation of my measurements between the nights. Even though the Vivo Active 5 does seem to be on paper slightly worse than the Venue 3, I suspect that this is random noise because I could only collect data for a few nights, and some of them were a bit atypical for me. Still, overall, the sleep tracking of all these Garmin devices isn't amazing. It's decent, but definitely not good and most struggle with REM sleep detection. If you want a device that has pretty decent sleep stage tracking and potentially is not very expensive, choose any device from Fitbit or Google. These likely use the same algorithm and they're pretty decent. So a Pixel Watch 2 would be quite expensive. But if you go, for instance, for the Fitbit Inspire 3, this is a lot cheaper. Now, other even better devices are, for instance, Apple Watches, but these are, of course, quite expensive and you need to be in the Apple ecosystem. The Nuco app is also pretty good but not available everywhere and it's also a subscription service. I really like the HD Pod 3 both for its sleep stage tracking but especially for its manipulation of my sleep environment. So it can cool or heat my mattress which I really like but it's really quite expensive. And also both the Aura Ring and the Whoopstrap 4.0 have pretty decent sleep stage tracking and they also provide actionable advice and interpretation of your data which I really like so a good app to go with it. But it's really up to you what you want to spend your money on. If sleep stage tracking is important important pick some of the top devices of this graph but maybe heart rate tracking is more important to you and then go to that section so while the vivo active 5 sleep stage monitoring isn't the worst it's important to know that there are better options available if you just want a rough estimate of your overall sleep time along with a basic understanding of your deep sleep and some REM phases the vivo active 5 could suffice and so could the venue 3 for that matter however for a deeper analysis of your sleep patterns you might want to look for instance at an apple watch other decent sleep stage tracking is provided by different Google and Fitbit products, the Aura Ring, HSleepPod 3 and the Whoopstrap for instance. Overall, I'd give the Vivo Active 5 sleep stage tracking a score of around 3 to maybe 3.5 out of 5 stars. Moving on, let's discuss a feature where most Garmin watches excel, GPS or location tracking. I tested the GPS tracking by biking my usual commute several times and observing whether GPS readings are consistent, which is good or if there's significant variation, which could indicate a problem. And for those of you that are interested, I had the GPS set to all systems for what should be theoretically the highest level of precision. And here you can see the GPS tracks for seven times I cycled to work, where I always started my workout on the corner right here. Now the green markers indicate the moment that the watch connected the GPS signal, so that's pretty good. Now I never gave the watch any extra time to acquire the GPS signal, and as you can see, it was almost always acquired instantly, which is really good. There's some minor deviation, but overall the position is almost spot on, so that's really good. Some watches really need some time to get that initial signal, and that doesn't appear to be a problem for the Vivo Active 5. And if we zoom out a bit, we see that the tracks are quite consistent, there's some deviation here in the beginning but overall going along the route it doesn't look so bad here they're really quite consistent so overlapping quite well and going further along the route it even looks a bit better the signals are super consistent here so i'm really happy with that and if we follow the route it keeps looking quite good i would say right here around the corner there might be a bit of deviation but nothing really bad and looking at the rest of the route, I'm quite happy with it. Only in this area right here, it starts to struggle a bit more, but we've seen that for more watches, 
And that's more or less what we see for the full final part of my ride. During this part of the ride, it really struggled a bit more. I don't think the buildings are that much taller here that it would really interfere with the signal that much. But we've seen this for more watches and it also appears to be true for the Vivo Active 5. Still overall not bad, much better than many other watches out there. But to confirm, let's look at the same thing again, but now cycling back from work. So these are nine times I cycled back from work. And as you can see, the signal was again acquired almost instantly. One time I took a bit of a different route here, so that's why the signal is deviating. I really went here to the ADM, but overall this looks quite good. Then here in the beginning, it does deviate a bit. So this is the same area where we saw some deviation before. And again, seems to struggle right here. But then here it again gets very consistent. So that's good. And then two times right here, I actually went somewhere else. But let's focus on these seven signals right here. So overall, they're looking pretty consistent. There's some deviation right here. Also right here, for some reason, there's quite a lot of deviation. And then here the signals are more consistent again. Still, it doesn't look quite as good as we saw cycling to work. Overall, not bad. And then here it's really quite consistent again. So quite good, I would say. Maybe not as amazing as some other Garmin devices. But compared to the competition out there, it is in the upper echelon of GPS tracking. But you need to judge for yourself. Would this kind of consistency in GPS tracking be good enough for you? And just again, before moving on, again here near the radio station, there's a bit more deviation. And I really wonder if there's some signals coming from there that are interfering or if it's just by random chance that some other buildings are quite tall in the neighborhood. But then right here, the signals get really consistent again. So again, Garmin shows why they are known for their GPS tracking performance. Even one of their cheaper models, this Vivo Active 5, is doing quite well in this regard. I still haven't found a way of quantifying this performance, but by looking at the tracks we just saw, I'm quite happy with the performance. Therefore, overall, I'd give the GPS tracking of the Vivo Active 5 4 out of 5 stars. Now before I get into my final conclusions, I do need to mention some of the limitations of my testing. Similar to most reviewers, I just test devices on me and maybe some of my friends, which means we cannot be sure if all results also translate to you. So be sure to also check out some other reviews to get a more complete picture. Also, my sleep EEG reference is not perfect. It does give us a general impression, but ideally we would also test watches more often against PSG. Okay, with that out of the way, what do I think of the Vivo Active 5? Well, I find it a hard watch to recommend, given that the Venue 3 also exists. Yes, the Venue 3 is more expensive, but given the better performance, that would be worth it, at least for me. It might be different for you, which is why I provide you with a lot of data in each video, and you can choose for yourself. As I said, I would rather buy the Venue 3 if I wanted to get into the Garmin ecosystem. In a past video, I gave the Venue 3 3.5 to 4 stars out of 5 overall, and the Vivo Active 5 is definitely not at that level. By the way, check out my video on the Venue 3 right here. To me, the Vivo Active 5 is worth more like maybe 3 stars out of 5 instead. Also, if you do want the Garmin device, I quite like the Forerunner series and I particularly like the Forerunner 965. If you do decide to get a Venue 3, a Forerunner 965, an Apple Watch, an HD Pod 3, a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save some money and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Also, given that you watched this whole video on the Vivo Active 5, check out this video on the Venue 3, which I think I definitely prefer over the Vivo Active and you might as well. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.